paper and not a kleptomania, okay? I yeah, you stole this, you stole that. I didn't steal this dang paper, Maria. Okay? It is my paper. I didn't steal this book. 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 I didn't steal this book.
all the time, just little stuff, things that I either couldn't prove he did or stuff that on its own didn't really seem to matter. So why has it gone on this long? Because he's my friend, Jim. And I am nothing if not a loyal friend. So here's the thing, Ben. I know you and William have been friends for a really long time, and I know childhood friends are really important for a lot of people. You know, when I was a kid, I used to dream about you all the time. It was like... <sighs> all right, man, listen. I gotta run something by you. Yeah, man. Hit me. I think I wanna make music. Like, recording? Performing? That kind of thing? Yeah. I've been studying guitar for a while, I've spent some time considering the options, and I've got a couple of songs that I'm working on writing right now. All right. Have you thought much about how you're gonna sell it? What do you mean? I mean selling it. Marketing, advertising, social media, that kind of thing. Have you got a plan? Uh, no, I guess I hadn't really thought about that. It's tough out there, man. Making art for a living is hard. You sure you want to do this by yourself? You play the guitar, right? Yeah. How do you feel about a duo? Two guys on the guitar. I've been toying with the idea of learning the banjo. I hear that's pretty tricky, though. You'll pick it up. You're a fast learner. All right, I'm in. Okay. Hey, listen, man. You're like a brother to me. You won't regret this. <laughs> analogy for what a good friendship should really be like. And you know, I get you being a good friend, but I guess I'm just still lost as to how we ended up here. Yeah, me too. And we're back here at 98.9, your only home for authentic folk. That was the latest single from the Weeping Prophets, 1824. And if you're just joining us, we have a special treat for you. Here in the studio with me is Ben Aiken of Ramey's Writers. Ben, how you doing today? Doing well. Oh, glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. And, you know, we're always glad to have you here. So, Benny, what'd you think of that piece from the Weeping Prophets we just heard? Uh, pretty good. I'd like to say I'm a big fan of their work. I'll bet you would. Pardon? That's right, Benjo. A reliable source has just told us that you have a connection to these rising stars on the folk scene. How did you... Don't worry about the how. Worry about the what, brother. The who, the when, the where, and the why. So please, Benjamin, why don't you tell me and all of our wonderful listeners about the time that you auditioned to play with the Weeping Prophets. Well, I... I thought... Wait, what? Come on, man. Two years ago, you were given a chance to play with the Prophets, and now you're sitting here. Obviously something happened, so why don't you tell me about it? Whoa. It's like you said, it, it, it was a couple of years ago. I was in college at the time. Me and William weren't really going anywhere. A friend knew a guy who knew a guy who was a roadie for the Prophets, and they needed another guitar player, ASAP. I'm talking 20 minutes notice. have the time or the money to get another guitar. The Prophets found their guy, not me. I think he's still with them. Did they ever catch him? Huh? 
The, the guy who broke into your car. They ever find him? Oh, not to my knowledge. I saw my guitar in the window of a pawn shop months later. Didn't really care to get it back. Well, hey, that wasn't long before, you know, you and William started to gain some traction. Yeah. Wasn't that around the time that William started writing Lonesome Road Blues? Wait, what? Lonesome Road Blues, the song that... No, I heard you, but I wrote that song. Really? That's surprising. It seems more like a William song to me. What does that mean? It's got this rugged outlaw sound that really goes better with the front man than with, well, you. We don't have a front man. Benny, be honest with me. Do you really believe that? What kind of- All right, seems we have a few callers, so uh, let's take those. Uh, hello, caller. How do you feel about- Jim, get down here. We're writing a song. What do you mean we're writing a song? Do I really have to explain what we're writing a song means? Why you and me? Because you're my guy now. Your guy. You know what I mean. I need somebody to bounce ideas off of. Get the creative juices flowing. Okay, sure, I guess. What's the song about? I have no idea. Do you have a theme? No. A melody? Nope. A genre? Folk music, probably. Ben. What? Oh, come on, man. I'm feeling energized. I want to make something. Okay, fine. Let's do it. doing here, man? You tell me. I just needed something that was mine. I needed something that didn't have his name on it. Something that was completely and wholly my own. I just... I just needed to be my own man. but let's talk about the band now. We had been in here earlier and we were surprised to hear that you didn't write Lonesome Road Blues. So where do you see yourself in the creative process with Ben? I heard that section earlier. And to be frank with you, he's the backbone of the whole operation. Really? I mean it. He doesn't always get the credit he deserves, but we couldn't function on my input alone. Ben is one of the most, scratch that, the most talented creative mind that I know. 
I'm not great at showing it, but every day I get to spend playing with him becomes the new best day of my life. What was I doing in there? In the band room? Sure, let's start there. Well, you went in there without any regard for making something real. You just wanted to spite William. Yeah. Kind of funny how I wanted to make something that had nothing to do with him, but ended up making everything more about him. You know, this is where I came right after my car got broken into. Yep, I went right up there, sat on the stage, and cried. That very well might have been the worst night of my life. I had lost my guitar, I had a busted window in the car that my grandpa had left me, and I had blown my first big shot. But that's not why I cried. No, I could I could handle all of that, but in the glove box to that car was my lucky harmonica. I bought it the day I decided to start making music. It was kind of a piece of junk and it barely worked, but, but it was mine. I only mentioned it to William. I guess I thought it was kind of like your birthday wish. If I told anybody outside, it might lose its magic. But they took it. They took it along with my guitar and 87 cents from the seat. I never even told William I had lost it. I, I just didn't bring it up. And I guess he forgot I had it. I almost quit that day. Why didn't you? He showed up. How you holding up? Not well. You want to talk about it? Not really. Well, that's unfortunate. Because I'm here to talk about it. I blew it, man. How did you blow it? You got robbed. It was stupid to leave my guitar in the car overnight. You could have never predicted that. No one could have. Yeah? Well, I'm taking this as a sign. A sign of what? A sign to get out. To give up. Dude, what are you talking about? We're this close. How do you know that? I can just feel it. One door closes, another one opens. That kind of thing, you know? You really think it's that simple? I do. But I also agree with you. This is a sign. A sign that you should double down on this. Listen, I got us a gig next weekend. I mean, it's nothing special, and we'll be playing for tips. But a gig's a gig. It's what we do. What do you say? Then let's go. I'm starting to think I should have quit that day. Seriously? I'm tired, Jim. I have fought and fought and fought to make it this far, and I don't think I have any fight left in me. That's so? I think so. I don't. I don't think you want to quit at all. 
I think you want to keep going. Matter of fact, I think you have to keep going. Oh yeah? Why is that? Because it's what you do best. Now, I'm not saying you have to get Rami's writers back together, but I am saying that you cannot quit this. This is what you do best. You tell stories. You make music. You're an artist, whether you like it or not. Okay. I know what I have to do. Hey, Ben. Hey. Uh, can we talk? Yeah. Look, you were right. As usual. William. No, please. Mel told me about the thing with the prophets. Obviously, I want that to work, and I know you do too. I meant every word I said on the radio. Ben, you're my best friend. I'd do anything I can to make this work. Same here. So... We gonna make this work? <sighs> All right! Now let's get back to business. Can you believe it, man? We're gonna tour with the Weeping Prophets. I know, right? I, I can't believe everything fell into place like that. Oh, man, I gotta call Mel. Yeah, and we did it all on our own. Our way. No marketing gimmicks, no lucky harmonicas, no stupid pop songs. I mean, can you believe it, man? We're gonna tour Philadelphia. Boston, even. Ottawa? What I'm did you say? Ottawa. You know, like, Canada? About a harmonica. What about a harmonica? You mentioned my lucky harmonica. Yeah, the one that got stolen with your guitar. I never told you that, William. Well, I mean, it was kind of obvious. I never told anyone that. Come on, Ben. It was so obvious. Don't... Lie to me. I'm not. Ben, come on, why would I lie to you? The radio interview. What? Someone told the station about my audition with the Prophets. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. Are you accusing me of something? Yes, I am. I'm accusing you of breaking into my car to steal my stuff. Ben, do you have any idea how ridiculous you sound you right now? You did it so I couldn't play with the Prophets. All right, Ben, I'm your best friend. Stop. I'm also accusing you of leaking that to the station so they could ambush me on the air. Go ahead, William, deny it. Yeah. Yeah, what? Yeah, I did it. I sabotaged you. Both times? Both times. Ugh, I can't believe you! What do you have against me? I have nothing against you. I was trying to help you. How could you have possibly been helping me? We needed this. This band, you and me. What we needed then and what we need now is to stick together. I am a grown man and can decide for myself what I do and don't need. I cannot believe that at my lowest point, just when I thought about giving up on my dream, the guy who came to me to comfort me and tell me, no, you can't give up, was the same person that robbed me. You said we were like brothers. And you claim this helped us? What you did hasn't helped us in the slightest. All it's done is keep one of us from succeeding. I mean, come on, man. What do you see this as a competition? I don't believe you. You really do see it as that. 
isn't everything. In this industry, of all industries. No, no, it's not. This isn't a competition because we're not opponents. And we're not coworkers, we're not musicians, we're not just part of the industry. We're supposed to be friends. I've known you since we were little. I've been there for you all along. And this is what I get. Ben, you need me. Stop. You would have never gotten this far Will without you? me. It's a symbiotic relationship. You need me, and I... I do not need you! I never have! This is not symbiotic. It's parasitic. You do these things because you can't fathom me being even a little better than you. And so you manipulate things to keep me down. Did you even mean any of the things you said on the radio? Save it. I don't even care anymore. No. No, 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 no. I've made up my mind. I'm doing this. I'm going out on my own. Mel won't sign you by yourself. I don't need Mel. I don't need Mel. I don't need the Weeping Prophets. And I don't need you. This is what I do. No matter what you say, no matter what they say, this is who I am. Whether I like it or not. Ben, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. But you did. You did realize. We're done here. Ben, please. It's over. William, live with that. We are once again back with Mr. Ben Aiken. Uh, a few weeks ago, he released his first solo album, Closer Than a Brother, to pretty rave reviews. I know we here at the station have really loved it. But tell me, Ben, after all those years with Ramey Writers, how does it feel to finally be off on your own? I gotta tell you, it's been really refreshing. I feel so invigorated and artistically driven, and I feel so amazing that the album has been received so well. Hey, we are too, but do you miss it? Miss what? Working with William. I, uh, I hear he's been doing fine on his own. I'm not asking you for a wellness check, man. I'm asking you if you miss William. William Jennings, when I worked with him, was an impossible man. He was condescending and controlling. You couldn't believe a word that came out of his mouth. He tried to sabotage my career on more than one occasion, and you ask me if I miss him. Of course not. Why would I? Turn to right or to left 
off the thin lonesome road of his choosing.